Peace YouTube, Malik the Sheik here. I decided to do this video because I was reading some comments on Facebook from some of my friends on Facebook and they talked about food and this one sister had prepared a meal and she took a photograph of it and posted it on Facebook and talked about how delicious it, it was and things of that nature. And she also mentioned that it had no pork byproducts in the food and how delectable and tasty it was, right? And I saw the comments about the photograph and her posting and a lot of other people was in agreement. Then I went about examining the names, or I should say the Facebook names of the people that was commenting in favor of the delectability of the food depicted in the photograph. So, Something came to mind as far as the diet that people partake in. And I thought that thing needed to be addressed because I don't think people really know what they should or shouldn't eat, especially Christians, ones that pay attention to the Bible. And these are the, the admitted Christians and a lot of other ones are Christians they just don't know it and they call themselves Moorish which Moorish means something like a Moor now why are these people something like a Moor right that's what the ish means why are they something like a Moor because they've been indoctrinated with Christianity this is why so much of this type of thing is depicted in the circle 7 Quran talking about Jesus and this and that is because of the indoctrination, the Christian indoctrination of Moors, which makes them Moorish. But we're going to cover that point more in a second. I want to deal with the diets that people ingest and we want to talk about the things that they've learned based on hearsay and the things that are written in their spiritual scriptures, all right? As you can see, I got in front of me on my desktop, Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read certain parts of Genesis and Leviticus and Acts. And we're going to see what it is that the creator, that people call God, or in the Bible it talks about, uh, the Lord and this type of thing, but I call him, and it's not really a him, it's a it, it's a force, it's an energy. I call it the creator. Okay, but we're going to get into this, and we're going to start in Genesis chapter 1, where it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So right away, this is telling me something right here. The creator, the creator created heaven, and the earth. It did not say the creator created the heavens and the earth. It referred to heaven as singular. All right, so when we go and take a look at what heaven means, it talks about the habitat or the place of dwelling of the gods, right? When you look that definition up, we're not going to go into that right now, but Look it up for yourself, and you'll find that it means just what I said it means. Now, 
this is what the creator did. He created the heaven and the earth, right? So now we're going to go and take a look at what else he did. Right here, verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, right here, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. Blessed is a word we want to get into later. Right? Because blessed is not really what most people think it is. But anyway, you can take a look at one of my videos from uh, Dr. Yaffa Bay. And she describes and defines what blessed really means. But anyway, for, for the purposes of what we're doing here, we're going to stick to this subject matter. And here we go. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth in every tree, in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. As you can see here, the Creator, which this is calling God, um, has given you herb bearing seed. And every tree and the fruit of the trees yielding seed for meat. In other words, me eat. Right? I know as far as me is concerned, that's what I eat. Okay? Along with the other things that's recommended by my creator. See? I eat what the Creator instructed me to eat because I honor my father and my mother so that my days may be long upon the earth land which the Creator, my God, has given me. Right? Anyway, on to verse 30. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. See here, the Creator gave everything. The beast, the fowl, the things that creepeth upon the earth, so forth and so on. He's, he's given all these herbs and trees and fruit for meat so at one point everything on the face of the earth was a herbivore or a fruitivore for the lack of a better term I probably just made that word up either way they didn't eat meat now as you can see here the creator never mentioned the things in the water you know, the fish and so forth. Because they don't have access to the trees and the, and the seed and so forth and so on. They're under the water, right? But we're going to see what they supposed to do in a minute, right? All right, so now. Uh, 
we're going to skip to Genesis, Genesis, the ninth chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Hold on. Genesis 9, chapter. Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Right? And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered, right? So the creator is talking here, see? It's telling Noah and his sons, this is after the flood, telling Noah and his sons, see, because all of the fruit and and the trees and the seed and all of that was washed and molded and uh, destroyed basically by the flood. You know, everything was basically uh, killed during the, during the flood except for the fish, right? And of course, Noah and all of the animals that he took upon the ark. But this is after the flood and the, and the creator is telling them, okay, what they ought to eat now, right? And he told them that the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air. So now the, the beast of the earth was afraid of this man. Also the fowl of the air. Why? Because, okay, now the man has the authority from the creator to go eat some of this stuff, right? So we're going to see what it is that we're supposed to be eating after the flood. Now, it's cool to go ahead and eat the same things from before the flood because all of the men, just like the apes, were herbivores, and the, herbs, uh, and the apes are still herbivores today, right? All they eat is fruit and vegetables. But anyway, here we go. Verse 3, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. So the creator is telling the creation not to eat the flesh that has the blood in it, right? So in other words, this is why the Jews, or the so-called Jews, in order to have their food be kosher, how they slaughter cattle is, they'll take a cow and they'll slit his throat and they'll hang him from his hind legs and let all of the blood run out of him. But this is not what's done at the regular supermarket. The way that they slaughter cattle is they'll take a sledgehammer and bust him in the head and kill him that way and the fear and the anxiety associated with the blow and the knowing that he's about to be killed, those hormones and enzymes are uh, absorbed into the meat. And this is what you eat after a cattle is slaughtered that way. But anyway, that's sort of aside from the point. The point is, is that we're not supposed to be eating the blood. So there's rare steaks and all of this rare meat that people like to eat, especially the European, especially the so-called Gentile. And we're going to get into what Gentile means in a minute. But the Gentile loves rare meat. Matter of fact, I have an acquaintance, a guy that I used to refer to as a friend. He used to eat raw hamburger without cooking it. I'm not trying to give anybody any ideas because I think that's an abomination. But Nevertheless, that's what he did. Anyway, we're going to continue. So now the creator has given man the ability to eat flesh, but not the blood. Then in verse 5, chapter 9 of Genesis, it talks about, And surely your blood of your lives will I require, 
at the hand of every beast. Will I require it? See, he's telling you now. Okay, now you can take the animal's blood and eat their flesh. In turn, the animal can take your blood and eat your flesh. Right? And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. So now you got man against man all of a sudden after the flood because the creator found out how wicked and evil this man wanted to operate. So he caused the flood to come upon the face of the earth. Go and read Genesis for yourself and find out about all this if you haven't already. And the creator caused all this to happen because he refused to have a generation grow up under those circumstances defiling his creation so he started all over again and this is the the uh the beginning of the new creation when he's telling man okay this is what you should do and he's giving them commandments all over again see before he was in the garden of eden and he had the one that they call adam in the garden and we ain't talking about a d a m we're talking about atom and we're talking about Eve, which is evolution. So Adam is atom, and Eve is dealing with evolution. And so we're dealing with the evolution of the atom that created the man. You follow what I'm saying? Either way, in the garden, he brought every beast before this one called Adam to see what he would call them. Right, and so I've heard preachers talk about where he walked the the line in front of uh, Adam, and Adam said, "Well, I'm gonna call you the lion," and patted him on the head, and and sent the lion on his way. Right, but I don't see it that way. This is how I see it. See, when you talk about any animal or any man, animals and men have nature. Nature's about themselves. In other words, it's a it's a natural way in which they operate, right? So lions have a particular nature, elephant have a particular nature, so forth and so on. So the creator brought all of these animals before the first man, right? And said, Well listen, I'm gonna teach you the nature, which is the name. See, because he was talking about, he wanted to find out what Adam would call these animals. So their name is lion and elephant and bear and so forth and so on. Follow what I'm saying? Now, what the creator actually did is taught Adam, or the first man, I should say, taught the first man the nature of these animals. Because in order for you to have dominion over animals and over the fowl of the air and over the fish of the sea, you have to learn their nature. You know, the salmon, they swim against the flow of the stream. So you know that about their nature. Then now you know where to wait on the salmon so you can catch them and eat them. Right? But if you don't know that the salmon flow against the stream, then you downstream somewhere waiting on salmon and you be there forever and you start to death. You feel me? But anyway, the creator taught the first man the nature of these animals. But we're going to continue. Now I'm going to read from Leviticus, the 17th chapter. And I'm going to start reading right here at verse 10. And whosoever, correction, and whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Now, this is clear. So, when you start eating blood of, according to the Creator, 
or even the strangers. See, you got Israel, and then you got the strangers that sojourn among Israel. That's another topic for another lesson for another day, to find out the difference between the Israelites and the strangers, right? It's sort of on a metaphysical level, but we're going to deal right here <clears throat> on the carnal, and we're talking about the flesh, right? So we're talking about these men who may eat blood, they're going to be cut off from among his people, okay? All right, now we're going to go to... Um, the next verse, which is 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whosoever, correction, and whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel or the strangers that sojourneth among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl, that may be eaten. See, this is talking about the ones that may be eaten. Not It don't say any beast of fowl that you eat. It says the ones that may be eaten. He shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. So this is telling you, get the fowl of the air and the beast and catch it and pour out the blood thereof similar to what I just described to you that the so-called Jews do. <clears throat> they slit the throat of the cow and hang them by his hind legs and let all of the blood run out on the ground. And then they have to cover it with dust. That's clear, right? So now, verse 14. For it is the life of all flesh the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever, whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. So now what he's telling you is something particular here. He's saying the life <clears throat> Of every living thing is the blood. So when you eat blood, you eat life. So that's contrary to being fruitful and multiplying. It's actually uh, against the creation to eat blood. It's against life. It's actually what we call death. All right, we're going to go a little further. We're going to Leviticus, the 11th chapter. <clears throat> and uh, so just hold on. All right, so we're in Leviticus chapter 11. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. And the Creator spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying unto them, Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat amongst all the beasts that are on the earth. So now the Creator is specifying which beasts you should eat. That's upon the face of the earth. Right? Because remember in Leviticus 17, where we was reading, it talked about. Uh, Point out the blood of the animals that you may eat. It specifies that there's only certain ones that you may eat. Not just anything that come along, come crawling along or hopping along. 
you kill it and eat it. No, it don't work that way. If you do, you're taking your life in your own hands. But if you follow the creator's instructions, then your life shall be long upon the earth, which the Lord thy creator have given thee. You feel me? Anyway, verse 3, Leviticus chapter 11. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. So the beasts that you eat have to have all of these attributes. The hoof have to be parted. It has to be cloven footed and chew with the cud. All right, so I'm going to pull up the dictionary. I wasn't at first, but I will now. I'm going to pull up the dictionary, and we're going to look up what the, the definition of cloven footed and parted hoof and chewing the cud and all this type of stuff is so we can know for sure which beast this is that the creator is talking about. Hold on. Okay, I went to Mr. Google, and I asked him to define cloven-footed. And this is what he came back with. Now, cloven hoof. It talks about the mark of Satan. See, most of the time when you see this character called Satan, he's depicted as having a cloven hoof. You know, like what's depicted here, you know. Uh a beast having horns and evil with a long tail and all that type of stuff and sort of the characteristics of a man and a beast combined you know like they depict in a lot of these um, old uh, books uh, you know where people have performed bestiality you know and made it with a with a a beast and so now the offspring was half beast and half animal see this is partly what they're talking about when they're talking about the depiction of satan right but either way here we go <clears throat> cloven foot right okay this is talking about the noun part of it the mark of satan now number two here a hoof divided into two parts at its distal extremity as of ruminants of swine. The, f the foot of an ungulate mammal. So some of these words I haven't seen before. My pronunciation may not be on point, but you can see the spelling. And you could pronounce it tomato or tomato. You feel me? Hold on. Now, in this definition, it talks about cloven hoof or foot, right? It's a noun. Life sciences and allied applications slash zoology. The divided hoof of a pig, comma, goat, comma, cow, comma, deer, comma, or related animal which consists of the two middle digits of the foot, right? So there we go again. Now we got included in here the pig, the goat, the cow, the deer, and other animals, right? Okay, now let's go a little further. Okay, again, I went to Mr. Google, and I asked, what animals chew the cud, right? And here's the answer. Cud is regurgitated food mostly in cattle that chew it up again and again to break down hay, grain, etc. Animals that chew the cud include cattle, goats, sheep, giraffes, bison, yaks, water buffalo, deer, camels, alpacas, llamas, wildebeest, antelope, pronghorn, and nilgai, whatever that is, right? But here, certain animals are not included. 
You know, I'm not saying hog here or pig or some of this other stuff that people like to eat. Feel what I'm saying? So that's my point here is that now the creator talked about the beast that we can eat and it's got to be cloven footed and it has to chew the cud, right? So let's go back. Verse three. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divided the hoof as the camel because it cheweth. The could. In other words, it's telling you don't eat the camel, right? But divided the hoof. He is unclean to you. Right? Then verse 5. And the coney, because he chewed the could, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean to you. And the hare, which is rabbit. Because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the swine. Though he divided the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Now, in case you don't know what the swine is, do I have to go look up swine? Okay, let's look up swine so we can be clear what swine is. Now, while uh, looking up swine, I found this interesting, right? I went to Google and I asked, what is a swine, right? It asked me, did, did you mean what is a swine? That's exactly what I meant. But anyway, this is what he came up with. Swine flu symptoms. What is swine flu? H1N1 influenza. Right now, I'm looking at this term H1N1, which is a scientific term or a chemical term for influenza. Now, ain't that the same virus that's in AIDS? I'm not going to do the research on that right now, but if somebody knows, let me know. Okay, we're going to go on. We're going to find out what swine is. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Right here. Swine. Swine, another name for pig, right? Here we go, domestic swine. Swine is a noun, right? Domestic swine. Pig, squealer, you know, pig squeal. Grunter, hog, all of these are swine, right? So we're going back to the script now. Hold on. Verse 7 again. And the reason I'm dealing with this is because this is like a delicacy amongst Asiatic people and especially Europeans. You know, you got swine, you know, I went in Burger King the other day <clears throat> and walked up to the cash register and it smells so much like bacon in there. I told the cashier, I said, where am I at? Am I in Burger King or I'm in Bacon King? Is this Bacon King? Anyway, you see what I'm saying. Number seven, and the swine. Though he divided the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. So the pig is unclean to you and you ain't supposed to be eating it, period. <clears throat> Number eight, of their flesh shall ye not eat and their carcass, not even, not even getting more specific here. He's saying, don't eat the flesh of this pig. Because he didn't say that after none of this other stuff, all this other stuff in here. He said, of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. You're not even supposed to touch their carcass. Let alone eat it. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all those that are of the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales.
rocks in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So the Creator is telling you here, what you eat that comes out of the sea and out of the waters and the rivers is supposed to have fins and scales. If it don't have fins and scales, he's saying here that you're not supposed to be eating it. So let me ask you, do shrimp have fins? The answer is yes. But do shrimps have scales? No, they don't. Does a catfish have fins? Yes, it does. Does a catfish have scales? No, it doesn't. See? And the list goes on and on about seafood or what people deem to be seafood. Certain seafood is only for those that live in the sea, not for those of us that walk upon the face of the earth. You feel me? But anyway, let's go on to verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move on the wa in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So if it's doesn't have fins and it doesn't have scales at the same time then it's an abomination to you and you're not supposed to be eating it number 11 they shall be even an abomination unto you you shall not eat of their flesh but you shall have their carcasses in abomination all right, I think that's clear. I don't think we need to go no further with that as far as what we're supposed to be eating and what we're not supposed to be eating in the water, right? So we covered the land. We covered the water. Now we're going to cover the last thing that we have dominion over, which is the fowl of the air, right? And unbeknown to most, but it is widely known that everything that flies is a fowl, right? But we're gonna cover some of the fowls that we're not supposed to eat, and we're gonna cover some of the fowls that we are supposed to eat, okay? Hold on. I think it's some additional things that people need to be aware of that don't have fins and scales, right? And that would be lobster. Lobster don't have fins and scales. It has fins with no scales. Crab. I don't know if crab have either one of them. Right? But of course, I already mentioned catfish, which is a delicacy amongst, and I'm going to use this term, black people, because these so-called black people don't know who they are. And they're colorable, which the term used to be colored back in the day. So they're colorable. So this is a different topic, but nevertheless relevant. Colorable in law means not really law. So when they say that they're colored or they're black, they're not really people. I'll try to help you understand that in future videos but for right now just wanted to make that point but anyway back to the subject matter so we got uh, things like shark that's in the fish and in the sea uh, that's in the rivers in the sea but shark don't have fins and scales they have fins with no scales and the list goes on and on and on and on okay so Let's take a snake, for example. Snake is an earth bearing, but sometimes they, they come up with the water moccasins. You know, they're in the water in on, on the land. But what do snakes have? They have scales, which is the skin. The skin is scaly looking, but they don't have fins. So all of these things are things that we're not supposed to be eating. You know what I mean? If it, if it don't meet all of the criteria, then 
you have to throw it out. And I would suggest that everybody go and ask these people, uh, does this fish, you know, when you buy fish at a restaurant or whatever the case might be, does this fish have uh, scales? You know, it was, it was a fish. It's got fins. You don't even have to ask about fins. Just ask, do it have scales? Most of the time, people that work there don't even know. But they will go and do the research because they're liable if you ask. And uh, they don't uh, tell you the correct answer that creates a liability issue. So they're going to go and do some diligence and find out. But that's just my suggestion. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the file of the air. Verse 13. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination, the eagle and the ostrich and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the nighthawk, and the kookak, kookow, or whatever that is, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl and the swan, and the pelican, and the gyre eagle, and the stork, and the heron after his kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. All fowls that creep, going upon all fours, shall be an abomination unto you. So it's talking about fowl on all four, right? How many birds have you seen that have four legs? So it can't be talking about a bird, but it's still a fowl. In other words, a fly, a bee, a, you know, the, what do they call these things that light up at night? lightning bugs and all this type of stuff these things fly so they're foul but they go on all fours so that proves the point that foul have more than two legs on occasion right verse 21 yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth even these of them ye may eat the locust after his kind and the bald locust after his kind and the beetle after his kind and the grasshopper after his kind but all other flying creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these ye shall be unclean. Whatsoever or whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even. It's talking about the evening. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until even. All right. All right. So let's scroll down a little bit here. So I think we pretty much covered this. I've gone on about 40 minutes now, and that's long enough to, to teach this particular subject matter. But the point is, brothers and sisters, is that you shouldn't be eating any and everything and just because somebody else is eating it don't mean that you should be eating it you look at some so-called people just because they look these like videos it. are intended to edify
and educated they walk and upright like you. If and or when talking here like you, you find these videos don't mean have been beneficial like you. Please subscribe. Thank you, and as always, All right. I greet you. So with love until and the peace. next time, and the next subject matter, I greet you in peace.